Hello, we are Ivana Tanasova and Stefka Dimitrova from the VMware's Open Source Program Office. It's nice to meet you here in this virtual talk. And as you probably already got familiar, we are going to talk about open source projects held. Do you know how often open source projects are being abandoned? Based on a survey held last year, 72% of the people included have left or neglected a project recently. This means that three-fourths of the people here in this talk may have a really great idea that they would abandon. So why do you think open source projects crash? Feel free to take a second and think about it and uh, also to share your thoughts with us. Uh, in the chat, we have asked several open source practitioners what are the first reasons that come to mind when they hear about an unsuccessful open source project. And this is what we got from them. Yeah, you probably see some of your guesses and proposals here. And there are probably many others which are missing because the open source projects are so diverse. But we've seen some repeating patterns and we wanted to summarize them. So here are some of the key points that uh, prove to successfully crash any open source project. And we try to think them as the red flags that we want, want to look after and to pay special attention to starting with the cases where key contributors have lost interest or they just have no time and or lack the resources to work on a project and then it's low maintained. Uh, it's followed by legal issues, also strong competition and um, any security concerns that might lead to putting on hold the project and eventually abandoning it. Very critical can be when there are interpersonal conflicts within the team, and especially when they evolve. But luckily, in open source, we think that the failures contribute to the next great thing that comes up. So this is a quote from a person who implemented a very successful open source idea. Uh, WordPress is used in more than 30% of the web. And we also believe in that, that, and we try to think of, instead of problems, just talk about improvement opportunities, solutions, and learnings. So that's why we transform that common problems that we have just observed into key health indicators. And these are the areas that need special attention, governance, contributor risk, diversity and inclusion, activity, and security. There are also others, but we want to, to look into more detail in these five. So talking about governance, uh, it has several aspects. One of, the, one of them is related to how the project is maintained. This means, are there potential leaders that, in addition to the maintainers, can grow and, make, and take such a responsibility? This ensures less chance of uh, maintainer burnout and that uh, there will be a continued support should the maintainer exit the project. The other aspect is whether the project is owned by a company or given to a foundation. There are pros and cons for both cases, but uh, there are certain risks if it's led by an individual contributor or company owned. Regarding projects independence and future, especially, because in that case there is no guarantee whether governance in go is going to turn into a radical direction that do not comply with adopters' requirements. And this can include license changes and functionality incompatibility. And the third is related to diversity. Are project contributors coming from a diverse set of companies or organizations? The case here is pretty much similar. For example, a company may force an open source project 
to depend on their enterprise product or use an inappropriate license. So having contributors and maintainers from different companies guarantees that there will be a balance in the direction of the project development. And talking about diversity, it's even more important because it has other aspects as well. Uh, one of them is the welcoming uh, side. Uh, an environment from a single type of people may result in not welcoming contributors different than the rest of the community. And this increases the risk of governance issues. Um, the regional diversity is also very important because it increases the chance to include people from different time zones. It also allows the so-called fall the sun type of development. And it's very efficient because of its 24-7 uh, availability. Uh, we also saw from our survey that toxic, unfriendly and even aggressive environment may force people to step back and can result in a project to become dormant over time. We also saw in the survey that it's common for people to either lose interest or lack time to work on a project. The so-called contributor risks, uh, risk uh, is also known as the bus or truck factor, indicates the probability of a project to become fully unsupported. For example, if it has only one maintainer and this maintainer steps back, there it's possible uh, for any changes to be merged anymore and for any issues to be addressed, bugs to be fixed and so on. Uh, this health indicator includes not only the number of project owners and maintainers, but also the tendency to give such responsibilities to new people and uh, also uh, whether the maintainers try to share knowledge and educate the rest of the community so that they can take that role in future. Another very important aspect is uh, how active the project is. Um, how often changes are submitted, how often pull requests are being reviewed, how long it takes for them to be merged. The lack of reviews from the community uh, is, uh, or the extremely short merge period indicates risks for bugs, regressions and poor quote quality. But the opposite is, not, uh, is also not the best uh, because an unreasonably long time for a change to be merged indicates that there is not enough maintainers and the project does not grow with the desired trait or that the maintainers don't have time for it, which uh, indicates risk that it can become dormant over time and can be abandoned. So the truth is uh, in the middle, in the balance between both. Uh, the other thing is, is responsiveness. So the easiest way to see how uh, a responsive project is, is to open an issue and see how long it will take for you to get a reply on it. If it takes too long, this means that the community is either not active enough or very small and doesn't have time to reply. This hides concerns that bugs or security issues are not going to be addressed in a timely manner. Uh, a few months ago, I was working on a feature uh, on a networking related project uh, that required external library for network visualization. And I found out one uh, really cool project on GitHub. Uh, it looked like in a sci-fi movie. I said, oh, that's great. I want to use that. And in my excitement, I didn't notice that it was not uh, updated since two years. Uh, and uh, yeah, of course, it didn't uh, run when I tried, but I updated all the versions because it was incompatible with uh, uh, latest uh, versions of Kubernetes, Docker, and so on. Uh, but uh, yeah, this was not enough. Uh, I was trying to fix some ancient issues, and I was so enthusiastic that I was two weeks trying to fix that project and make it working. Uh, 
uh, and after two weeks I realized that I cannot even estimate the time that will be required to resolve all the issues and that we will need to support it in future if we continue using it. So it, it's not the best approach and the most obvious indicator of how active a project is is uh, when is uh, the last commit made. Uh, and the other aspect, uh, the last but not least, is how often the project ships new releases. Uh, it's an indicator of how fast it's growing, how active it is in developing new features and fixing bugs. But even more important is how often security concerns are being addressed. A well-maintained project requires a well-established security protocol. This includes documentation advertising how to report security issues. It is crucially important that those are addressed and released on time, so that uh, for anyone using that open source project, they will be safe uh, in not exposing any security vulnerabilities. Um, Yes, we've tried to summarize all these uh, aspects, give you some details, some of our own experience um, and uh, the yeah, mistakes that we also did, uh, because they're all important to be considered, especially when you're starting a new project. But everyone who has started something from zero knows how many tasks that involves and they keep popping up and observing some project helps uh, Indicators might seem like the last thing to do, but even if you are able to take off without having that in mind, how do you know what direction are you heading toward and are you still on the right course? And keeping that right course, that's important and that's why we want to not only just uh, explain the, the overall areas to be uh, to be looking into, but also help you define concrete parameters to be observed. It will be your compass or monitoring tools that you or you can refer regularly to. So it's uh, it's it's really about making them specific, measurable, that they're something attainable and relevant for your project, and it's best if they could be defined over a certain period of time. And you probably recognize that I on through the SMART methodology of uh, objective setting, which uh, is just one of the possibilities, but it's really useful when you are defining your health metrics. And just to give you an example, diversity and inclusion is important, but really broad topic. So if you want to, to really look into that, you can define demographic or gender diversity and, um, and look into that metric or add documentation accessibility or issue labeled inclusivity to help you understand whether your project is welcoming new contributors. You can apply all that matrix and many others. And uh, we would advise you to um, check out Chaos Project, which is an open source project, and uh, uh, many metrics are defined there, and you can also contribute to that project. With open source, you're not only the creator, but the one that also brings the project to life and is responsible for all the different aspects. Thus, the health indicators we talked about can help you balance all the parallel tasks. And especially when you don't think of just one single project, but hundreds and thousands of projects, and that's what the open source program offices need to do. And Especially if it's in my case, as I'm uh, working uh, with focus on project health assessment, I have that great fun in balancing these aspects for a large number of projects. So just to name you some of the uh, use cases that make it even more challenging, uh, and uh, and they they challenge me to be more creative. Are uh, new acquisitions, reorganizations, some business or customer demands that will require us to adapt. So we need to have a magic to make it all work. And every open source program office does it differently. We had the assumption that everyone considers project health 
is important for managing their projects uh, and wanted to test that absorption but by asking in the round. So we asked in the to-do group and uh, all the participants in their survey have confirmed they, that. So they also were um, rating pretty high all the um, indicators, the health indicators that we have mentioned so far. And uh, you can see on the next chart that um, more, most stress is put on activity and responsiveness as well as security, but all of the aspects are, um, are rated as important. And the truth is that no one can provide any five-step solution. We just can share our best practices with you. And this uh, is based on our experience. So what we have, uh, what we encourage uh, uh, everyone to do when starting to evaluate project health is just first to shorten the list. Make sure to archive or sort out in any way uh, or inactive projects. Then uh, you could also group them by some common criteria such as uh, community relevance or maturity of the project so that you can choose which metrics to apply in, in each of the group's projects. Then keep close contact with the maintainers so that you are aware of what's going on and when there are any changes and also be able to communicate early enough if there are anything on um, a more strategic aspect that needs to be adapted in the project. And do it in a way that it's really easy to be in constant touch and, and receive regular feedback and provide as well feedback. So, Use a survey or a form or any other way that it would be best to communicate with you, your group of uh, projects. And last but not least is have an overview of what's going on and use a tooling to do that, especially when it, uh, it's up to hundreds of projects. And since Ivana is contributing to, uh, to open source tool that we are also using, it's the Ogre project, she can share some more details. Uh, yeah, I'm going to share some insights on how Augur approaches uh, uh, those metrics. Uh, what the project does is collecting uh, data from the GitHub and GitLab API regarding pull requests, issues, uh, and all, all the different aspects that we talk about. Anything that can be provided by, by the, the API is collected, stored in databases, and then metrics are calculated and uh, visualized. And that can be run to, against an organization or a set of projects. Uh, and uh, you, you can uh, check it, you can run and collect that data and see for your specific needs and your specific um, metric requirements. Uh, it's not the only available uh, open source project that does that. Uh, there is Grimorio app, Pitergia, uh, Destat, which is a CNCF uh, project. Um, there are some open source program offices prefer to use internal tools or maybe they didn't hear about an existing open source solutions. Uh, it's up to everyone's needs and requirements. Uh, my personal opinion is that it's more effective to use an open source solution because this saves time of developing own project. And uh, in such solution, various teams can put effort so that it will grow faster. Uh, but uh, in no cases, it's the, up to personal preference. And we are going to share some more details on how we approach metrics, some examples for, from projects we are observing. Uh, yes, we've chosen just some of the metrics that we are monitoring regularly, just to show you uh, how we define them. Uh, as already said, we are using Augur for that. And here are the examples of our projects, which are foundation on, but we apply that also for our uh, internal projects. Uh, so first is to start with responsiveness, as we've seen that it's rated really high and this is really important. Uh, so uh, we have defined a criteria which uh, uh, will 
either uh, rated the project as healthy or at risk. And then we could evaluate what at risk means. So in this case, it's the percentage of the pull requests which are responded within the next two business days. Next one is contributor risk. Uh, this uh, graph, uh, it's really nice uh, visual representation which shows how what percentage of the commits are done by the key contributor. So if there is any risk, that would be easy to see. And the third example was about the regularity of the releases. As we heard that, it's really important. Also, in terms of security uh, issues, so we just monitor the last six months and see how many releases are and what, uh, 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 what's their cycle of releases. So to, to conclude it all, we've talked about uh, failure first and then learning from the mistakes and what to, to observe and how to uh, be able to monitor all, all the time. It's really important to learn from that mistakes and from, learn from everyone else's mistakes because that's the opportunity that we have. And how to prevent going into the same traps. It's just First, uh, what we see is by defining clear processes for us as open source program office, for the maintainers in the project, so that it's uh, it's known what's expected and uh, to be able also to adapt that processes pretty quickly. Next is to be in close contact with the maintainers and, and can spot ahead of time if there is any risk of abandoning a project or of lacking any resources. And third is to have the guidelines to communicate uh, and to uh, be able to uh, prevent the lack of any really important documentation for like uh, licensing or as any kind of security issues that might come up. So just be proactive. And to conclude it all, it's not just about metrics. And although we talk a lot about metrics, we want to, um, to stress that you need to be aware that any metric can lead to a certain and will lead to a certain behavior. So make sure you know what you are aiming with a specific metric and don't over quantify it. It's all about people, community, and you need to get in touch and understand deeply what, um, what the indicators are showing. And that's also what's in life. It's not just about metrics. It's about people and the community. Thank you all for joining our talk. And feel free to reach out to us for any questions or feedback. Thank you.